So it's Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. I'd like to be joined by our good friend and boxing manager, Sam Jones. Sam, how you doing, mate? I'm all right, mate. Not bad. I feel a little bit ropey the last couple of days, but but um, now nah, I'm all right. Good. It's, it's all that talking, mate. <laughs> the press conference. Maybe. May, maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Two press conferences means double Sam Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Sure how much <laughs> Josh Taylor appreciated that. But... Yeah, probably. Probably not. So the big news, obviously, uh, earlier in the week was that it's finally over the line, the rematch between Josh Taylor and your fighter, Jack Catterall. What do you think was the key thing that finally saw the fight go over the line after so many months of negotiations? Listen, Danny, usually when... This is me being honest, right? At the beginning, like this is last October, I don't believe Josh Taylor wanted to fight Jack Catterall, right? But he's also not stupid. And he knows that this is his... There's no other payday out there for him like this fight. And even though it's took him, it took him a while to accept because I, I, st- I do think Josh struggles with the fact that Jack's his biggest payday. But I think even he will understand, fuck it, wow, this fight's massive. Do you know what I mean? That's better how, look how well the fight's been received. So it's just a case that everybody kind of wanted the fight. Myself, Jack. Josh and his um, his lawyer Tom. So as long as we wanted the fight, we knew that, and and also the fact that we were all confident. To be fair to to Josh, to Tom, myself, and Jack, we knew this fight was big, right? We knew this fight was big, and in the beginning, Eddie never said it wasn't a a, a big fight. He just said, "Oh, it's not pay per view level." Mm. And even he admitted yesterday that he got it wrong. He got it wrong. And I'm happy the fight's ended up where it's... I'm, hand, I'm happy the fight that... Listen, we went round the houses a little bit and um, it's, it's well documented. And I appreciate the people that that tried to do the fight as well. Sky, TNT, I, I, I really appreciate it because it just shows that people wanted to do this fight. So we got there in the end and look, uh, Max, Frank Smith, Eddie, Matchroom, we're, we're doing the fight on the zone, and it's it's massive, Danny. Look how well it's been received. It's the fastest selling sporting event in the first di- Leeds first direct history. Is it? Does it seem now that Matchroom have actually played this quite smartly, in that they've waited to see what else was on offer, and they've then exercised matching rights to that rather not, than have not, to not particularly. <laughs> Not, not particularly because I've had to pay a bit more money. Um, <laughs> I've had to end up paying a bit more money. But ultimately, they did always want to do the fight. Um, and look, that just shows my, my relationship with Matchroom is very good, right? Because they said that they didn't have to. Jack was under contract at Matchroom. So they didn't have to say, they didn't have to say, go, go see, uh, go look at look at other options. Do you understand what I mean? They were doing that for the good of the fighters. So I have to say thank you to Frank Smith for that because Frank gave me the green light to do that. And ultimately, it sped up the process of getting the fight done, which is the reason why, listen, I know I, I get a bit of stick. That comes with the territory, but I worked my balls off, Danny, to get this fight done. Genuinely, like I, I'm... During this fight was got on it when we finally agreed, Danny. Honestly, I was just like, "Oh, <laughs> thank you, God, thank you, God." Like honestly, like it's the first time I've ever felt like I've done loads of like fights, but but the relief of getting it done was unbelievable. I'm so happy for Jack, um, and look, we can all look forward to it. Uh, a massive fight. Look, the press, the the uh, the press conferences were great. They were feisty. They had a bit of everything. You need all like that. The, the boys don't like each other which makes the fight so, so big. Like, it's it's unbelievable. But this fight could have gone to a huge arena or it could have gone to a stadium in one of the boys' back gardens. It really could. It really could. It was so big. And the ticket sales, before people jumped down my neck, it proves it. It proves it. Tickets sold like that, gone. And when people say, when people say oh, they've gone on to... Re-, no, the tickets have gone, sold, sold out, gone. So I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of, of of Jack. I'm very proud of the job we've all done together. I really am. Like it's job well done. Now it's just time for Jack to get into camp and train for um 
and train for the biggest fight of his life on April the 27th. Now, we'll come back to this fight in a second, but just a quick note on the guy <laughs> who obviously bid for the fight, wanted it on pay-per-view. Yeah. They had two pay-per-view fights last year, which isn't a lot for Squire. Um, yeah. One of which, or the second of which, was won by Chris Eubank Jr., who isn't just a Squire fighter. Now yeah. they've lost out on this. I know they've got a slice of the uh, knockout chaos event out in Riyadh. Yeah. Where are their UK pay-per-views coming from now at Squire, do you think? The, the, the thing is, it, it's, it's, I wouldn't say they've lost out because ultimately it wasn't theirs to lose out on. They, they, they kind of, um, they kind of, uh, well, I don't know what the word is, but like it, basically, to be fair to them, right? To be fair to Sky, their involvement in this did speed up the process of this fight getting done. That, that, that's the truth. I'm sure, they'll appreciate that, is, that. Yeah, yeah, but it's the truth. It is the truth, and so genuinely, I thank them for that because the fight was looking like it was ending up on Sky, so. It wasn't a gimmick. Believe me, I wouldn't waste my fucking time, Danny, to kind of do the fight there and have the fight ready to go somewhere else on, on a different platform to bring it all the way back to the other one. Like, believe me, I, I wouldn't... I, I wasn't interested. I wasn't like, fucking hell, more work to do, but it sped it up. Um, but going back to your question with the Skype, pay-per-view fights are few and far between now, Danny. You look at what's available, right? You look at kind of the fighters you can do pay-per-views with. And you, you look at Kell Brook if he comes back. Liam Smith, Kell Brook, pay-per-view fight. Um, uh, Connor Ben, Liam Smith, um, Eubank Ben, Eubank Brook. Um, they're, they're very few and far between because I, I don't put Anthony Joshua in this equation anymore because Anthony Joshua was never fighting in the UK ever again. Um, whether people want to think that's that that's just a reality of the situation. Fury, not boxing here again. Um, so pay-per-view fights, and, and if I've missed somebody off there, I apologize. It's it's I've had a long, I've had a very, very long, long week. <laughs> I've had a very long week. Um so yeah, but there isn't many there. But Taylor Catchwell. So, but when I was telling, I said to Eddie, "This fight, this fight's really a pay per view fight." I'm not saying Jack Catchwell is a pay per view star. I'm not saying Josh Taylor's a pay per view star. But together, you can make a massive event. This is why it's so important, Danny. Right? And I said this before. It's so important that these domestic rivalries they happen because as a boxing fan. Uh, and, and this is what I try to explain to, to tell Eddie. And Eddie's more experienced than I am. I've been in boxing nearly 10 years, but Eddie's been double that time, right? Um, I said, look, these two genuinely dislike each other. It's not like when Haney and Garcia are like, okay, he's there, go there, meet him here and have a bit of a push and a shove and, a, and an argument. No, these two want to fight each other on side, Danny. They want to have, they, they, when they see each other, they want to have a roll about with each other. They don't like each other, but it's like, but this is what I'm saying. What what I'm going around the houses, but what I'm trying to say is it is so important that we we make these domestic fights. You look at the, the Wood Warrington, the, the first one, never sold out as fast as uh well, I didn't think it did sell out, but it was still a big fight. But I'm saying like Wood Warrington, um Eubank Ben, a yard against Boaxi, Wardley Clark, great fight. Um Azim against Dalton Smith. Like these, these, I'm just, I'm using, and if I've missed any out, I, I apologize because there is loads. There's loads that you can make. It's so important we keep making these domestic fights because this is what sells. This is what's what the armchair fan wants to see. They want to see rivalry. They want to see domestic rival rivalry fights. And 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 Catherine Taylor's proof of that. I know it's got a story behind it, was again with the controversy of the first one, but it shows you, you need dance partners to make great events. And that's and that's uh and it's it's never been more evident than it is now when you look at this size of, of Taylor Catchell. You said Joshua and Fury never fight in the UK again. That's quite a big thing, never. You see the Saudi dominance going on for that long, or you see Joshua's career not being much longer? It's it's not just that, Danny. I just think that Fury's thirty five. 
I think AJ's 35 this year. Uh, 34, 35. They've not got that long left, either of them. And you you can't expect Tyson Fury to earn, I don't know, for argument's sake, 100 million or 80 million, whatever he's making for this Usyk fight, and then go and fight, I don't know, he's mandatory. Hergovic, for you. We'll use Hergovic as an example. In the UK for 8 million, 10 million. Like, like... He, he's used to earning that type of bread. So when you when you're used to earning that type of money, you, you you're just not gonna come and be a prize fighter in 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 the in the UK because the money's not there at the moment for for the for those type of fights to happen. The Fury against AJ. Like I know, listen, AJ against Fury should really happen in the Wembley Stadium, but it's not going to. If it fight if the fight happens, it's happening in Saudi Arabia. And me personally, I mean this. I don't care. I just want to see the fight. And I think that that's why I think Saudi's great for boxing because they are making these fights that never seem quite possible, very possible now. So we have to be grateful that the fights just take it. These fights are going to just take, take place. But that's why I mean, going back, Taylor Cashrell, that could have gone abroad, but it's going to be special. April 27th, Leeds first director in a neutral venue, by the way. Neither guy's from Leeds. One's from Scotland, one's from Chorley. It's it's amazing how fast these tickets have gone. Honestly, it's so, it's excited me so much because it's like it made me think as a British boxing fan, I'm just like, wow, this is amazing. Let's let's keep it going. I want to see other fights get made. And a lot was made earlier in the week of uh, Josh Taylor demanding the fight take place at 140 pounds. Were you yeah. surprised by that? No, because. There's just a, if Jack beats Josh, right? The first thing people, well, some people are going to say is, and maybe Josh is it's at one forty. Josh is Josh. Josh has been at one forty too long, so Josh is probably thinking the back of his mind. This might not be the case. He might be thinking the back of his mind. Ah, trilogy could do a trilogy if the fight's a great fight on the basis of these ticket sales and the stories involved and how much the boys don't like each other. You could make it that kind of thing, but. We're not thinking like that. Jack isn't thinking like Jack is just thinking, got to do a job on this guy. So, yeah, I don't know. But Josh has his own team and he has his own thoughts. And like I've always said, Josh Taylor is a great fighter, great fighter, the greatest Scottish fighter ever, in my opinion. One of the best to ever come out of the UK. Um, And we're Josh, Jack Catchell is preparing for the best version of Josh Taylor. So let's see what happens. But um, really, I'm really looking forward to the fight. Is there another rematch clause this time around? No, no. So there's no guarantee that you know whichever way it goes, there'll be a rematch at a higher weight. No, it's just like it's just called being sensible, Danny. It's just called being sensible. If the fight's a really good fight and the fans want to see it again, then you do it again. If not, you you both go you you sep you separate ways. But it's like in anything, if the fans pursue something that the fans want to see something it should happen and usually does happen if the fans want to see it but then there's the world title aspirations as well because josh K taylor can look of at course. it and say well i've already of been course. undisputed champion jack cattle hasn't won a world title yet so it, 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 listen exa exactly that exactly that but as i say this is a business we're in and um but ultimately jack wants to write what he believes is a wrong, which we all, well, most people with a brain cell believe is a wrong that happened two years ago. And he's going to get his chance to do that. And it's going to get his chance to do that in front of a packed, packed arena. Do you relish the kind of back and forth at the press conferences? <clears throat> Genuinely, right? I went to that press conference and when I saw the amount of people there, like I'm, I am human, right? So I looked and I went, oh, my God. But there were a lot of them were, like, saying, oh, hi, and they were, like, taking pictures with Jack and like, talking to me and pictures with me, believe it or not. <laughs> um, yeah, that's hard to believe. And when, <laughs> when I was just sat down, when, just as I was sitting down to speak at the press conference, somebody shouted something to me. I won't repeat the words because um, you would probably have to bleep a lot of it out. And then I just thought, and then someone started on my hair and I thought, you, you, you cannot 
call the haircut. It's a tremendous haircut. So I I thought, right, you're you're all fucking having it now. Yeah, so you like it, you enjoy it. Yeah, of course. It's it, it's fun. Build it like uh, my job had been done, Danny. It, like in a sense of I've got the the deal done for Jack. This is the fun part. This is the fun part, selling the fight. But ultimately, because the boys don't like each other, really don't like each other, and they wanted to fight, it just made it even better. Do you know what I mean? It just made it even 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 better. So yeah, I enjoyed it. It was great. Matthew did a phenomenal job. Um, the two city press tour. The guys did a great job. Jack didn't appreciate Josh's colouring book, gave him a slap for it. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Everyone everyone did their jobs. Everybody did their jobs. Yeah, he said um, it's not a gift for a 30-year-old man, but then a little while later said, oh, I love colouring, I love crayons. It, <laughs> so I wasn't yeah, I really sure whether he wanted like, it like, or like, not, you know. Did he I keep it in the end? Is, like, <laughs> I just think, like, I like colouring books. Yeah, that, that, like, it's, people just read, read into it. But listen, Josh Taylor was trying to be a dick and Jack slapped his face because of it. You can't... It's like when Josh come to Jack at the in Edinburgh one, touched his nipple. They're not in a position to, like, be, be touching each other or coming that close to each other. They're going to they're gonna s- swing at each other. But luckily, it never got out of hand. Bit of a slap, bit of a grab, bit of, bit of a neck grab and a few, bit of a colouring book pass and a teddy bear pass. I still got the teddy bear that Josh gave me, by the way, in the talk, talk, talk sports studio. My son loves it. Um, but yeah, it, I thought the I thought it sold really well. I do think that the fight would have sold anyway, but because of the press conference and the way they clashed, um, the, the way they kind of came together and the, the backwards and forwards, I think just made it even better. So just everybody smashed it. Everybody smashed it. Everybody did their job, and everybody's looking forward to this fight. Everybody is. Good stuff. Now something else I did want to ask you about before I let you go. You know Chantel Cameron very well. Um, we've talked about yeah. her <clears throat> in the past. You obviously tipped her to beat Katie Taylor um, the first time around, which back then was an upset. Um, ahead of the third fight between the two, she's changed trainers. What, yeah. what do you make of that? And, and how, if any way, will it affect the trilogy fight? I think she's gone to Grand Smith. Grand Smith's one of the best trainers in the country, in my opinion. I think he's very underrated. So I think it's because Grant doesn't speak much. He doesn't really get the recognition he deserves. Really good gym. Um, tremendous fighters in there. Um, and uh, she just probably wanted a change. She's been with Jamie a long time. I don't think this is, uh, Jamie's one of the best guys you could ever meet. One of the best trainers in the country also. And I think they've just amicably said, right, great, been a great ride. Um, good luck kind of thing. There's been no, anim- I know for a fact, there's no animosity there whatsoever. Um, that's not the way Jamie and Nigel work. So, no. Chantel's just doing what she thinks right for her. And I think Jamie like, was like, but the pair of them kind of just thought, probably decided together, maybe it's best you go do that. And uh, really good luck. And uh, I, I think they'll, they'll do really well together, J- uh, Chantel and Grant. What do you think the perception will be from Taylor's camp of this move? Will it be, you know, this is a bit nah, of an erratic thing to do? Nah, nah, nothing. Goes? Nothing. Because the fight will be exactly the same. All three fights are going to be exactly the same. They can only fight each other one way and it's going to be another great fight if it happens. So then what makes the difference? If all the fights are very similar, why did Chantel win the first and lose the second? Know, I, you, because sometimes you, 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 I don't know, change, fresh change of scenery. Like, like you, you, you don't know. It's that they've, They've worked together a long time, haven't they? Uh, oh, no, Jamie no, I don't Chantel. mean that. Sorry, I probably wasn't clear. So you said they're always going to fight in exactly the same way because of the styles. But what yeah. made the difference in terms of Chantel winning the first time around and then losing the second um, time? The second time, listen, I didn't think the ref was very good. I think Chantel was very unfortunate not to get a knockdown with Katie. I'm not saying because I think Katie, the right, the right uh, lady, won the fight. I think Katie did win the second fight, but it was very close, nothing in it. The first one, I think Chantel won it convincingly. The second one, I think Katie just maybe have just, uh, just, I, I don't, she just, she maybe just wanted it that little bit more than Chantel in the second fight. And then the third fight, you might get a repeat of the first fight or a repeat of the second fight. So you're going to get the similar kind of fight, which is a all action, unbelievable fight. There's no other fight out there for either, either uh, lady at the moment. Katie Taylor, Needs to. It's one one. You need to. You need to settle it. 
Who who do you fancy in that trilogy fight? It's it's a pick and fight, isn't it? Like I believe if Chantel Cameron, yeah, so pick one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe if Chantel Cameron, I've always I'll always pick Chantel over over Katie. I think if Chantel Cameron turns up the way she did in the first fight, she wins the fight. And just before I do let you go, as there are some other fights coming up, Zhang Parker, who do you like there? I think Parker's going to win. That's a that's a tough one to call, I think. I, I, listen, I know I don't want to go into Zhang. I still, I'm not overly sold on Zhang. I'm really not. I'm really not overly sold on Zhang. Um, but he's doing really well. He's doing really well. But, and uh, and I like Joseph Parker as well. But So I fancy Joe to win that fight. Fair enough, Sam. I'll let you go. Maybe get some honey and lemon down your throat. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, really appreciate it, mate. And um, let's catch up again soon when you got your voice back. Thank you, mate. I'll speak to you soon. <laughs>